Hello and welcome to this special Chinese New Year's edition of Discovering China. I'm Alina Wong. And I'm Ben Hedges, and today we will be taking you through some of the most important traditions of Chinese New Year and the historical background. We look at some of the legends behind Chinese New Year. And how it is celebrated. Here in the U.S. and by Chinese across the world. The Chinese have a very specific way of celebrating the New Year. If you walk down the street in Chinatown during Chinese New Year, you see a variety of ancient traditions, such as red banners, firecrackers, and lion dance performances. The streets are filled with lively celebration. However, legend has it that the New Year has not always been a time of festivity. An ancient Chinese story tells a chilling start to this festive holiday. It begins with an ancient Chinese beast called Nian. Every New Year, Nian would rise from its dwelling in the sea to ravage a Chinese village, eating livestock and hurting people. The villagers soon found out from a wise, gray-haired old man that the only way to scare the beast away was to set off firecrackers, to light lamps, and to hang red banners on each door. As the story goes, this was the beginning of a tradition that would last thousands of years. So this story led to the creation of many of the traditions for celebrating Chinese New Year. Let's take a look at some of these traditions. Margaret Tri now tells us why firecrackers are so important to kick off the New Year celebrations. For many Chinese, New Year celebrations will not be the same without firecrackers. This tradition originates from ancient China, as the Chinese were the first to invent gunpowder, as early as during the 9th century. It was believed that ghosts, bad spirits, and even the legendary monster called Nian that came out to attack people during the New Year were afraid of loud noises. So the ancient Chinese would fill bamboo stems with gunpowder to make small explosions to drive away nian, evil spirits, and bad luck. Another popular traditional belief was that the noise from the firecrackers would awaken a sleeping dragon that would then fly across the sky, bringing plentiful rain for their crops. Today, in most countries, for safety issues, it is illegal for individuals to light firecrackers. But this tradition persists to make it safe and enjoyable for the public, various Chinese organizations have organized firecracker celebrations as part of the annual cultural activities. Since 2000, the Chinese American community in New York City has been organizing the annual Chinatown Lunar New Year firecracker ceremony that attracts more than 200,000 visitors. Another way the Chinese use to scare off evil monsters at the start of the new year is the lion dance. Let's now find out more about this Chinese tradition. The lion dance is a familiar sight on the streets of Chinatown during Chinese New Year celebrations. This is a traditional lively dance that combines art, history and culture with the rigors of Chinese martial arts movements. The two dancers form the lion. One holds the lion's head and forms the front part of the lion's body, while the second dancer forms the body and the tail of the lion. Together, they prance about to the rhythm of drums, cymbals, and a gong. The lion symbolizes courage, strength, and authority. According to traditional Chinese belief, loud music can frighten away ghosts, evil spirits, and the nian, the Chinese legendary monster that would come out to attack and kill people during the new year. Today, the lion dance is performed to usher in a new and prosperous year. It involves the ritual of the lion plucking the greens, or cai qing. The Chinese word cai to pluck sounds like the word for wealth, also pronounced cai. Thus, a typical performance involves the lion plucking vegetables that are placed on the table or hung from a ceiling with a red packet outside the business premises. This auspicious ritual is believed to bring in good luck and wealth to the business. If you walk around a Chinese village during the New Year, you will see a lot of red banners stuck on people's doors. Now these banners are messages of good fortune for the New Year. An old Chinese tradition of hanging red banners for New Year was one of the methods used to scare away the beast, Nian. Now these banners contain auspicious messages of goodwill and harmony when the Lunar New Year comes around. Some of the banners contain corresponding Chinese poetic couplets, known as Chunlian, or spring couplets. These are placed on the entrance of houses during the Chinese New Year. 
These Chinese couplets, which are pasted on either side of a doorway, are sometimes also accompanied by a third idiom, located on the top of the door. Here is a common Chunlian about the coming of spring. Dong Chu Shan Ming Shui Xiu. Winter is gone, the mountains are clear and water sparkles. Chun Lai Niao Yu Hua Xiang. Spring comes, birds sing, and flowers fragrant. Da Di Hui Chun. The whole earth returns to spring. Another common banner is the single character Spring Chun or Good Fortune Fu, except they are posted upside down. This comes from a play on words. The Chinese character that means backwards or upside down, Dao, is pronounced the same way as the character for arrive, Dao. So if you have the banner Spring posted upside down, it implies that spring has arrived. Chun Dao. A common Chinese saying which is seen on many banners also contains a play on words, Nian Nian Yo Yu. When read aloud, sounds like have fish every year. The meaning of this saying actually comes from another homophone. The Chinese character Yu, which means fish, sounds exactly like the Chinese character that means abundance. So the banner means abundance throughout the year. Sometimes it is written as abundance and sometimes as fish, and usually accompanied by fish swimming around on the poster. Whether it's abundance through the year or just an abundance of fish through the year, the Chinese have always liked to paste these banners come holiday season. Though there is no longer the looming threat of Nian, the beast, people still hang these posters to wish people joy, prosperity, and good fortune throughout the year. So, Alina, for Westerners, Christmas is our most important celebration, and we get lots of presents. What do you guys get at Chinese New Year? Well, Ben, in Chinese families, we give each other red packets with money inside. Unlike the Western custom of giving presents, during Chinese New Year, it is customary practice to give and receive red packets, a hong bao in Chinese. This is a small red rectangular envelope for putting money in to give away as a gift. The envelope is red because in traditional Chinese culture, red is considered a lucky color. It's believed to ward off evil spirits and to bring good fortune to the receiver. Hence, most red packets are decorated with auspicious Chinese symbols or characters such as happiness and prosperity. Today, red packets come in all kinds of different designs besides the more traditional ones. Traditionally, the older generation gives the red packet to the younger generation. Parents, grandparents, and married members of the family would give the red packet to their children and grandchildren and unmarried family members. Nowadays, this practice extends to close friends, neighbors, and even some companies give away year-end bonuses in a red packet. The amount of money placed inside the red packet varies depending on the relationship between a giver and a receiver, but it must be in even numbers. Amounts starting or ending with eight are common. Eight or ba in Chinese symbolizes prosperity because it rhymes with the character fa that's used in the phrase fa chai, which means to generate wealth. It is also customary to use brand new notes for the red packet. Finally, an important piece of etiquette on receiving the red packet is not to open it in front of the giver. In some ways, I'd prefer a red packet, then I could buy whatever I wanted. Well, don't they say that it's the thought that counts? Yeah, but, you know. Anyway, Chinese New Year is not just one day like Christmas. The celebrations actually go on for 15 days with different traditions on different dates. What's your favorite day of the Chinese New Year? Well, Ben, I would have to say it is New Year's Eve when all families gather and make dumplings together. What about you, Ben? Well, for a Westerner, I've certainly had my fair share of Chinese New Year celebrations. When I lived in Hong Kong as a child, my favorite day was the last day of Chinese New Year, Yuan Xiaojie, or Lantern Festival. We used to go to the beach with lanterns, and when I spent a year studying in Taiwan, I found out that the Taiwanese go to town even more with the lanterns. Check this out.
Now, when I was living in Taiwan, I lived with the Taiwanese host family, and during the New Year, we spent many days eating. The host family even gave me red packets. One of my favorite New Year's foods is tang yuan. It's a sweet rice ball with black sesame or peanut sauce inside, and it's served in a sweet soup. And it's normally served on Yuan Xiao Jie, my favorite day of the Chinese New Year. Well, I think it is time for us to say goodbye. I have a Chinese New Year party to go to. Starting early, I see Alina. Well, we won't have a show for you next week because we'll all be busy celebrating Chinese New Year. But you can still catch some of our videos online. But for now, 新年快乐。